All right. Let me have a word of prayer with you. Father, we cannot pray enough. We just pray that you will bless us this day. Help us understand the uniqueness that about we need you as, the, as our Savior from sin. We ask in Jesus' name, amen. Am I on here? All right, good. Get my... I'm going to just review with you a little bit as far as what we talked about a year ago, almost a year today. How about that? In the summer of 19, 1890, some Adventist pastors asked Ellen White to prepare a small book on the book on the themes of salvation. They wanted to use it on their evangelistic efforts to show the interest, the way of salvation. That's the purpose of this book. The title of the book alludes to the story of Jacob's ladder in Genesis in which he saw a ladder reaching up and down to heaven, from heaven to earth with angels ascending and descending along it. The ladder. The ladder represents who? Jesus. Ellen White prepared this new book setting forth the simply and clearly the steps taken by the sinner to come to Jesus. Steps to Christ. Now, I've been studying this book for quite some time and it's quite unique that there's two divisions in the book Steps to Christ. The first of it is Steps to Conversion. The second part of this is How to Stay with Jesus from chapters 8 through 13. Both are necessary. And it's interesting, as I'm going through, I just learned a lot, even just this time that I did this. So let me give you the 13 chapters and how it all works. The first is God's love for man, which we talked about a year ago. <laughs> you probably don't remember. It deals with compassion of the Father. The first chapter was actually never written until later, because people needed to know the love of God in order to come to God, and you know he cares. That's why she put that book later, in, about four years later. And this was after the general conference session in 1888, which is quite an interesting one. The need to say which we'll talk today is about is Christ's power only. The next one will talk about repentance, which means the changing for Christ. We'll never come to Jesus unless we see his love and care for us. Isn't that true? The third one is confession, confessing our sins. The next one is consecration, which is working with the will or power of choice. Quite interesting chapter. The next one is faith and acceptance, which talks about claiming the promises of God. And finally, chapter 7, the test of discipleship. What do you think the test of discipleship? How do you know you've been born again or a true disciple? Give me a word. What do you think? How do you know you're a disciple of Christ? It's the commandment keeping. Obedience. Now you'll notice that obedience does not come first. Obedience comes after we went through these steps. So how do we stay in Christ? Growing up to Christ talks about our commitment of time. Spending time with Jesus. We can never become Christ-like unless we know who he is and spend time with him. The work in the life which deals with the community of believers, how the believers work together. The knowledge of God, which he deals with communion with God, which is dealing with what? What do you think the knowledge of God is? Where do we find the knowledge of God? The Bible, right? So that's talk about is Bible study. Then the privilege of prayer. Communion with God. And then what to do with doubt is conquering our fears. Notice those C's I put in that column. Rejoicing the Lord, finally the caring for one another. That is a key thing. I like to come to a church where people care for one another, don't you? So now let's put this. The first chapter, just to review with you, Steps to Christ, is questions are asked, how do I know there is a God? 
Good question, isn't it? Chapter 1 deals with it. Secondly, what kind of character does he have? When I come to him, is he angry? Do I have to come to him when he's angry before? Now notice this. The first word, the first sentence of this entire book is nature and revelation alike testify of God's love. I grew up on the bank of Nisibatna River. And you'll see that there's a tree up there that I would read from, depending on the weather. Steps to Christ was my reading tree. Also, you'll see this bridge. This is Nisibatna River near Defiance, Iowa, that's where it's at. And underneath that bridge, I would take my book and a teenager, and I would read this book, Steps to Christ. Changed my life. I wasn't mean to my brothers and sisters anymore. Uh, Eli. Our Father in heaven is the source of life and wisdom and joy. And look at the wonderful things of nature. God made man perfect, holy, and happy. And the fair earth, it, as it came from the Creator's hand, bore no blight of decay or shadow of a curse. It was transgression of God's law, the law of love, that brought woe and death. Notice it's the law of what? Love. You know, this has 38 times in this chapter that deals with the word love. 38 times. We must get the word love and law together. It's a good, good thing. Now, Satan, it said in Steps to Christ, chapter 1, led men to conceive of God as a stern, as, of a chief attribute of stern justice who is severe judge, harsh, and exacting creditor. Have you ever seen that? It was to remove the dark shadow by revealing to the world the infinite love of God that Jesus came to live among men. Love. <laughs> the price paid for redemption, the infinite sacrifice of our Heavenly Father in giving His Son. Notice the emphasis is on the Father. To die for us should exalt us should give us the exalted conception of what we may become in Christ. The more we study the divine character in light of the cross, the more we'll see his mercy, his tenderness, his forgiveness, blended with equity and justice. Isn't that good? Study his character in light of the cross. So let's go to steps of Christ. Question is asked, why do I need Christ? Why do you need him? A little monkey fell into the quicksand. And as he was sticking to the sand, a monkey on the bank started giving advice. And he said, pull yourself out. And the little monkey started to try to pull himself out of the quicksand, pulling by on his own hand. Couldn't do it. The monkey said, start pulling on your ear. So he started pulling on his ear, but he wasn't able to get out of the sand. The truth is, you can never get yourself out of quicksand of sin. You need help. Remember the three Ds. I'm going to show you three Ds. Turn with me in your Bibles to the book of John 7. Or Romans 7. Sorry about that. Romans 7. I want to show you the three Ds. Romans 7. One of my favorite chapters. We'll be using seven a lot in Steps of Christ. Look in the first verse. Do you not know, brethren, for, or I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion or power over him as long as he lives? First one we're going to look at is dominion. Second one is death. Romans 7, verse 10. Romans 7, verse 10. It says, And the commandment to which was to bring life, I have found to bring what? Death. We'll talk about death. And finally, only Jesus can deliver us from our body of this body of death. It's Romans 7, verse 24. O wretched man that I am, who delivered me from this body of death. And of course, the next verse is, I thank God through Jesus Christ our Lord. Well, let's take the first one. Let me back up here, back up one. 
Only Jesus can what? Deliver us from the power or dominion of death. That's the theme. So let's look at the first point. Do you not know that those who, do you not know, brethren, before I speak to those who know the law, that the law has dominion over man as long as he lives? Man was originally endowed with the powers, noble powers and a well-balanced mind. Originally, he had these powers. But then, in his he was perfect in his being, in harmony with God. His thoughts were pure. His aims were what? Holy. But through disobedience, his powers became perverted, and selfishness took the place of what? Love. How many of us struggle with that issue, don't we? Self over love. Love would be much better, but we need to learn to love. By the way, what is love? How would you, how would you define biblically the word love? Where would you find it at? Anyone know? Where would you find definition, a good definition for love? John 3, 16, For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten Son. Describe that love. So let me share that with you. The best chapter, I just want you to catch this one. First Corinthians. Where am I going? 13. Verse 4. Love suffers long and is kind. Love, it does not envy. Love does not parade itself. It's not puffed up. It does not behave rudely. It does not speak on its own. It is not provoked. It thinks no evil. It does not rejoice in iniquity, but rejoices in the what? Truth. It bears all things, believes all things, hopes all things, endures all things, but love never fails. That is love. So anyone advise, I, you know, usually if they, uh, people want to get married and they said, do you love him? I said, well, I'm not sure. Then I said, you got a, I've got a problem with you. But love, I said, describe this. This is what love is all about. And they think about that. They think about that. And that's a key thing for everyone. In fact, we're told we should read this verse every day. So we know how to behave ourselves, right? All right. But here's the point. His powers of reverting, selfishness took the place of love. So, this is a clear word. So written, so the, the written law was given to increase what? Awareness of sin. This is in the, the Bible here. And our need of a Savior. Notice this verse. Our word, this quote. It is impossible for us of ourselves to escape from the pit of sin from which we are sunken. Our hearts are evil, we cannot change them. Does that make sense to you? You cannot change your heart. Who can bring an unclean thing out of a who can bring a clean thing out of an unclean thing? No, not one. Let me get my water out as Ben did for me. All right. All right, next, next one. The carnal mind is enmity against God. It is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Why can't it? Because it doesn't love. Education, culture, and exercise of their will, which we'll talk about later, all have their powers, but here they are powerless. They can produce an outward correctness to behavior, but they cannot change the heart. They cannot purify the springs of life. There must be a power working from within, a new life from above. This is the point of the chapter. <coughs> Before men can be changed from sin to what? That power is who? Christ. Only way. Only way. 
When you tell some people they need to behave themselves or correct them in their, quote, sin, can they do it on their own? Absolutely not. We're telling them something that's impossible for them to do. So if they don't know Jesus, how can you tell them to get over their sin? They have to. So the second one I'm going after is death. This death is a good death. You know, you must die twice. If we're still living, for, if we're still living with, before Jesus comes. You've got to die to sin. This is the death you're speaking about. The commandment came, which was the way to bring life. But I found to bring what? Death. Most assured, I say to you, unless the grain of wheat falls to the ground and what? Dies. It remains alone. But if it dies, it will produce much grain. How shall we who have died to sin live any longer in it? Or, how, or do you not know that many of us as we're baptized in the Christ, right? To sin. Baptized in the Christ, we're baptized into his what? His death. Let me show you how that works. Romans says, and we die and we're buried with Christ by baptism. So you see the preacher holding up the, that person before they die. And then the burials when they go into water, is that correct? See that, how that works? So that represents the vine. And then we're raised to life from the dead by the glorious power of the Father. We now, we now also may live new life. Praise the Lord for that. I have been crucified with Christ, but I no longer live, but Christ look, lives me, lives in me. What fruit did you have then in the things of which you are now ashamed? What fruit? For the end of those things are death. But now, having been set free from sin, and having become the slaves to God, or servants of God, you have fruit to holiness, and the end is everlasting life. That's what means there. A Savior said, except a man be born, he, unless he receives a new heart, new desires, new purposes, motives, notice those things, a new heart, new desires, purposes, motives, leading them to new life, you cannot see the kingdom of God. You must be born again. So my third point, you can see I'm moving along here, deliver, last point. Only Jesus can deliver us from this body of death. Notice this verse. It is not enough to receive the loving kindness of God. Now someone said, I remember when I was teaching a class once, that we talk about love too much. But, not, but I, no, So here's where we got. Here, here's where we're going to come to. This is what he, this verse is mean. It's not enough to receive the loving kindness of God to see the benevolence, the fatherly tenderness of his character. What more do we need to see? So not enough. It is not enough to discern the wisdom and the justice of his law. To see that it's founded, founded upon eternal principles of love. It's not enough. Why is it not enough? We need to see that we are powerless to keep the Ten Commandments on our own. Paul said, I consent that the law is good, the law is holy, and the commandments is holy, just, and good, but I am carnal and sold under sin. He longed for the purity of righteousness, which he himself was powerless to attain. He cried out, O God, O wretched man that I am, who should deliver me from this body of death? Long for the purity. Deliverance. This body of death. Such a cry has gone up from the burdens of hearts in lands, all lands and all ages. The answer to this, what, what one answer? Behold the Lamb of God that takes away the sin of the world. Isn't that beautiful? Behold. Now here's, here's the unique, this is the steps to Christ where she gets 
When after his sin in deceiving Esau, Jacob fled from his father's home, weighed down with a sense of guilt. He would never see his dad and mom again. Did you know that? Never see him. The one thought above all that pressed upon his soul was the fear that sin had cut him off from God and he was forsaken in heaven. That was the fear. As he slept, a strange light broke upon his vision. And lo, from the plain on which he laid, vast shadowy stairs seemed to lead upward to the very gates of heaven. And upon them, angels of God were passing up and down. It's the only way angels can come up and down to this earth. Did you know that? And from the glory above, the divine voice was heard in a message of hope and comfort, which he needed. Thus was made known to Jacob that which was needed and longing of his soul, a savior. With joy and gratitude, he saw revealed by the, a way by which a sinner could be restored to communion with God. The mystic ladder of his dream represents Jesus, the only medium of communication between God and man. The only. That's why throughout the entire scripture, the word Jesus covers it, isn't it? That's all you, it's all you need to know. So when you read the word of God, think about what, how Jesus comes to you. This same figure is to which Christ referred in his conversion with Nathaniel. In the apostasy, man alienated himself from God. The earth was cut off from heaven across the gulf which lay between, there could be no communion. But through Christ, the earth was again linked to heaven, through Christ. With his own merits, Jesus has bridged the gulf which sin had made. And so ministering angel can hold communion with men. Can you think of that? That's a powerful statement. Christ is the link. Without Jesus and his death upon the cross, there would, be no, there would be no communication to you. Awesome thought. Christ connects fallen man with his weakness and helplessness with a source of infinite power. We can overcome through Jesus. That's what it's saying. Here's power. Communion becomes commun communion. Communication becomes with God comes communion, which leads to union. Delivery. Three Ds. First D. Dominion. It has power over us. Power reveals sin to us. It always does. It produces death, which is a good thing. Death to self. And finally gives deliverance from the power of sin. Only Jesus can deliver us from the power of or dominion of death. I'm going to bring my favorite poet, Vera Parker, called My Need. I need thy precious promises fulfilled in me today, that thou may hear answer me, and in thy name I pray. I need a heart so clean and new, a spirit just like thine, I, that I may keep the law each day and do thine will divine. I need a thirst for righteousness that I may claim thy grace, sufficient grace to stand each test wherever time or place. I need to get more forgiveness, commitment, and patience too, a faith that seeks thy guidance for all I say and do. I need assurance of thy love that keeps me every hour a closer walk with thee, my God, that I may know thy power. Next time we're going to come together is patience. How can we be just before God? And how are we to come to Christ? That's what the next steps are. All right?